everybody, welcome back to my channel, it's Jiu, and today I wanted to talk to you guys about how I am learning Korean. So before I get into it, I just want to mention a little bit why I am learning Korean. So if you're new to this channel, if you haven't already followed me, uh, I am a professional esports caster. That means I commentate professional uh, video game playing. <laughs> and if you do already know me, then undoubtedly you already know that. Now, a lot of people on YouTube who learn Korean really do so because they got into Korean culture through things like K-pop, uh, mostly k-pop <laughs> um i actually don't listen to k-pop i have maybe like three k-pop songs and they're all remixes in my library so i'm definitely a bit of an anomaly there i am actually learning korean for a couple of reasons but the thing that originally sparked my interest in learning korean was because i work in esports if you're not familiar with esports you may not know why that matters Korea is basically the mecca of esports. It is the global hub of esports. It's massive culturally over there. Uh, typically, the best players in esports will always be South Korean. As a Westerner, to get to cast in Korea is quite a big deal. A lot of people will miss out on job opportunities because they don't speak Korean. Usually, that's not a thing for casters. I'm hired to speak English. But if you're a coach, if you're a player, if you're working in esports, being able to talk Korean is a massive benefit. Now, that's not the only reason that I'm learning it. I have always been really interested in languages. I've always really wanted to be a polyglot. So I already have a massive passion for languages anyway, and that's kind of the, my main motivation for doing it. So I'd say I'm fairly new to the language. I've been working on it for couple of weeks now so really quite a baby um, but I thought I would talk a little bit about how I'm going about learning Korean um, and maybe that can be something that I can do updates on in the future so I mentioned that when I was a bit younger I was learning Japanese uh, that was maybe in my mid to late teens I actually stopped doing that because of school and I just had too many things to focus on but the thing with Japanese and Korean is they have very similar grammatical structures there are a lot of concepts in Japanese that I'm already familiar with that are in Korean that as a Westerner can be quite alien to learn about. A kind of the common one people always mention is particles, which is something that they have in Korean and Japanese. Now those are concepts I already know, it's not new to me. So being able to already have that background knowledge of a very similarly structured language ha has really helped and is something that does really help. So if you are somebody who, like me, you watch a lot of anime or whatever when you were a teenager uh, and you have some idea of how Japanese is, then you may find Korean a little bit easier to pick up. Now I am definitely a textbook person. My general philosophy on learning languages is learn all of the grammar and build up the vocabulary as you go along. The way I see it is the grammar is the skeleton of a language and the vocabulary is the, the meat on the bones. Um, so you really need the skeleton to be able to understand how the language is put together and be able to form sentences and form what it is you want to know. So I wanted a textbook where I would be able to learn a significant amount of grammar. I didn't want to learn it like bit by bit in a, oh, here's some common phrases. Okay, let's learn how to use the present tense. I wanted like, a bible of grammar. So the textbook that I ended up picking up at first was this, Korean Grammar, The Complete Guide to Speaking Korean Naturally. Uh, this is actually um, kind of academic, I guess. It's written by three people, I think all of whom have PhDs. PhD in linguistics, MA in linguistics, okay that's not PhD, <laughs> PhD in linguistics. So these are people who do know what they're talking about and I believe two of them are Korean. So this textbook splits everything up into chapters. The Korean alphabet, pronunciation rules and spelling, parts of speech and sentence structure, particles, nouns, verbs, sentence endings, complex sentences, verb derivations, and embedded sentences. So I actually skipped the first couple of chapters. I already knew how to read Hangul. Um, that is something that I would highly recommend that you learn straight away. Uh, in any language that you are learning that has a different script to the one that you are used to, learn that script immediately because if you rely on the romanized versions, you're really kind of gonna get nowhere. Um, you really just need to learn how to read it. I don't have much advice for that though because 
for whatever reason, I seem to be fairly good at picking up scripts really easily. I learned Hangul in, in one evening because I was bored one day. But if you don't know how to read Hangul, don't worry. Pretty much any textbook that you get will teach you and you can find resources online as well. Um, the same kind of with pronunciation, but the fact that there is a pronunciation guide in here is really useful. One thing I will say is the romanized versions in this book, I don't like all that much because they don't use the like, official romanized way of writing Korean. Uh, for example, this would be written as this normally, but in this book it's written as this. You can see I have some little things in here, but I actually really just write all over the book. Lots of highlighted bits, lots of annotated bits, and one of the main reasons that I bought this book over other books was because it had exercises at the end of each chapter. So here's an example. <laughs> I really do like write over everything. And I this book it look, looks also a little bit beaten up because I've taken it on a lot of planes because I have to fly a lot for work. So here are some more exercises that I did. So quite a bit in there, and there's still so much of this book that I haven't covered yet. I would also recommend owning a Korean dictionary. Uh, I use this one, this is just the Collins Korean Dictionary. It's one of the nicest smelling books I've ever bought. <laughs> it's pretty simple, I mean, it's, it's a dictionary. And I actually just recently bought this. This is the Sejong Hanguge two. <laughs> this is a workbook that's actually made by the National Institute of the Korean Language. So this is about as official as it gets. So it's just a normal kind of textbook, sort of similar to the ones that you would see in school. And it has a lot of exercises in it. It also comes with a CD so that there's listening exercises, which I really wanted. I haven't actually done any of these yet because I bought this like yesterday. Part of the reason I really wanted that is because when I'm learning Korean, I really wanted to emulate a little bit how I learned German. And I learned German in school. The reason I wanted to do that is because I, looking back, have seen a lot of errors in how I learned Japanese. In Japanese, I really focused on the writing and the reading, which is what I'm, I've always been most comfortable with. Even in German now, that's still what I'm most comfortable with because I never went on an exchange, I never had the experience of going to the country and having to speak the language. But I remember in school, part of the reason why I can pronounce German well and I can say a load of things in German even if I didn't have the language exchange experience I can still say loads of things and um, I learned German focusing on grammar but I picked up a lot of vocabulary on the way is because a I didn't rush it and b I focused on all of the different uh, four disciplines reading writing speaking and listening because I had to because I was in school and with Korean because I really want to do it thoroughly I want to do it properly I want to make sure I have resources that are going to be allowing me to practice all of those things so I really wanted to get some resources that have um, some audio stuff in it so I, I'm forced to listen to it and obviously a lot of exercises everyone learns best by doing um, that's why I've I've invested in those one thing I will say when you're using the textbooks is not only should you be reading the hangul but you should also be saying everything to yourself as you're reading it that's what I do it gets you used to saying the Korean sounds and the Korean words um, and so it's not just all in your head and you're actually getting used to making those pronunciations so I always sit at my desk just you know reading to myself like na nun blah 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 um, <laughs> <laughs> but at least I'm used to saying it. Now, I don't just sit and highlight my textbooks. I am a huge writing person. I am like someone who has a million notebooks and I write everything. Um, even for esports, I just have millions of notebooks that I write loads of analysis in. And the same can be said for Korean. So this is actually the first notebook I filled up. It's not that big, actually. Um, this is just a cute little... Japanese notebook that I got in little Tokyo in LA and I put a mercy sticker on it. <laughs> Korean notes and I basically have as I've gone through this textbook written up everything in it but in obviously my own format and also that means I've had to regurgitate and repeat it and uh, that's made it go in my head some more um, and if I want to reference it I have it right there and it's all in my own my own notes so kind of just looks like this. 
so in here so far I only have notes copied up from the nouns and the particles chapter so no verbs or anything in here but it's the amount the density of the information in this book is actually insane I also have this book I'm covering like ignore the fact that it says YouTube on it <laughs> I used to use this book for YouTube notes, but I literally use like one page. This book is where I write up sentences that I have used when talking to people, especially if they're ones people have corrected me on, so I'm writing up the correct versions. Uh, but also I write in the exercises that I have done from this book as well. So if there is like a large paragraph that I've had to either like put in the particles or put in the numbers or whatever it is, um, it won't come with an English translation, so I will write it up sentence by sentence here with the English translation that I've done myself. Um, so that's kind of an extra level of work that I'm making myself do, but it means that I have all this here. And then in these boxes here, I just write up the vocabulary that I learned from that paragraph or that exercise. What I want to do is get another notebook that's just for vocabulary rather than mixing it in with this. Um, I went to do that today, but I couldn't find a notebook I wanted. And lastly, for the physical things, I also have this. This is just a chart I made for Korean numbers because if you don't know, there are two sets of numbers in Korean. They're used for different things. And um, when I first went through everything, I didn't take the time to sit and memorize them. So I made this chart for reference, but I've also like memorized quite a lot in like, the two hours that I was working after making this chart. Uh, but it's still pretty useful to have, so you know. You'll eat, eat some stuff, or that just sits on my desk, I'll probably throw that away at some point. Now, one thing that I know both from personal experience and from things that other people say is the best way to learn a language is immersion. So, what are some other ways on top of all this self-study stuff that I am using to help me learn Korean? Well, the number one thing is Hello Talk. HelloTalk is an app that I've heard so many polyglot YouTubers talk about for a really long time and I downloaded it about a week and a half ago and I was obsessed straight away. It's essentially a social networking site because it's got its own feed as well as a messenger for language exchange. So you can put in your native language or the languages that you speak fluently and the languages that it is you're learning and you can be connected to people who either speak those languages or are learning those languages. So for me, I've actually put in both Korean and German, even though I'm quite advanced in German, it's just a really good way for me to continue getting practice. It's quite funny because my messages to people in Korean are like three sentences max, whereas to people in German, it's like a thesis. <laughs> but it is really great. There is also a feature in it where you can have like a call with someone. I haven't done that yet because I don't feel that comfortable um, like spontaneously talking in Korean. You can have conversations with people and you can directly translate the conversations because there is a translator tool in it. What else? I mean there's so much in that app. You can correct people's sentences and they can correct yours. It is great. I love the app. I am paying the like it's like £1.60 per month subscription so that I can have two languages on it. But you don't need to do that. You can use it for free. But I am in awe of this app. <laughs> I have also downloaded Kakao Talk, which is a basically Korean WhatsApp. That's like their main messenger that they use. The reason I have that is because I... <laughs> It might be because I'm a girl, I'm not sure, but I have basically over a hundred unread messages on HelloTalk. So people I'm speaking to can get buried quite easily. So I have Kakao Talk so that I can move certain conversations over to there, but also there's obviously no translator tool in it or anything. So Kakao Talk basically forces me to just be like totally naturalized in, in the language. Um, I obviously usually sit with Google Translate and I'm like, what does this mean? <laughs> now the other things with immersion is consuming Korean media. And I said at the beginning, I am not someone who listens to K-pop. So a lot of people who are learning Korean listen to K-pop, they hear all these lyrics all the time. And I totally know what that feels like because when I was back learning Japanese, I listened to so much J-pop and I would be able to pick out words in the songs that I was listening to. I mean, even in Vocaloid, the same thing. And I learned a lot of words from that as well. But I don't have that experience with K-pop because I've, I just never got into K-pop really. But what I have been doing is watching a K-drama on Netflix. There are actually quite a few on Netflix, so if you're interested in doing that, you should definitely go and have a look. I listen to it in Korean and I have the Korean subtitles. You know, when you can read Korean as well, like very useful. Uh, but I remember however many years ago it was someone saying to me, when I, when I was first told that watching things 
was super useful. Um, someone said to me, don't watch it with English subtitles because you just won't learn anything because you will just read the English subconsciously and you won't be listening to what the person is saying. Whereas you'll pick up things much more if you both have the subtitles and the audio in the language that you are learning. Obviously in esports I hear Korean be spoken but generally you know if a Korean player is speaking there will always be translators around so I won't be listening to the Korean so much I will always be listening to the English translator. So that is how I am learning Korean. I've been doing it for a a couple of weeks to a month now, but I've been doing multiple hours a day. Oh, I totally forgot to mention, I do have some Korean reading material. So I have this copy of Harry Potter of the Chamber of Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets in Korean. Bang, which is like the secrets chamber. <laughs> My boyfriend got me this from Korea when he went in October and I didn't get to go with him. This is just a random insert from a Korean magazine that it looks kind of cool. It says polymath on it. My boyfriend got this for me because he saw the main magazine had League of Legends on it and he was like, oh my God, it's a magazine about esports. And he got back and I looked at it and I was like, this is not a magazine about esports. This is like a science magazine for kids. So I do have a few kind of Korean reading materials just lying around. And when I'm a little bit further on, I will definitely have a crack at Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. So yeah, that is how I am learning Korean right now. As I say, I'm super beginner. Um, I would like to believe that at some point I can take the topic exams. Um, topic two, probably a little bit further in the future, but topic one, I'd, I'd like to believe that I would be able to take topic one within a year. Um, <laughs> that might be ambitious, we'll see. I will maybe make videos with updates if that's something people are interested in, just to let people know how my learning progress is going. So far, really enjoying it, absolutely loving it. And if anyone is learning a language, whether it's Korean or not, add me on Hello Talk. Let's talk about languages because I'm not surrounded by enough people who are interested in languages. My flatmate is bilingual and she doesn't care about languages so <laughs> but thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you in the next video which will probably be about esports <laughs> all right bye guys